Luke 16. Jesus told his disciples, There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, What shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that, when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? Nine hundred gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it four hundred and fifty. Then he asked the second, And how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, Take your bill and make it eight hundred. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Everybody is silent. You know, we have made that purpose in our church that we would like to do disciples, others. We are disciples to make disciples. And uh, part of that vision is to have a diverse community of God's people. And praise God because... You are seeing that, that God is doing a miracle. Praise God for each one of you. But at the same time, too, as pastors, I need to adjust. And every time I look at Pastor Paul using the live illustration of messages, Pastor Carlos using a lot of this technology, sometimes you feel, oh, I'm already 60, going 61 years old. And I don't know if I can still catch up with it. So I need to invent my own diversity. And sorry, this is the only diversity that I know. <laughs> At least I changed. <laughs> right, Chris? <laughs> You're blessed to have three servants of God. And not only that, but also with styles of message. And how to present the truth that comes from the word of God. And me, I'm much more as what Chris have demonstrated. And maybe it's still fresh in your mind how he really copied me. Even my height. <laughs> Chris, I love you because we've been together for 15 years. I've witnessed how you grew up. When you're still small like this, I normally uh, hug you on your head and uh, me now, you're doing it now to me. <laughs> That's what life is. But I believe a lot of you are familiar or maybe some of you are familiar with the passage that you have heard. Maybe not because this is not a popular message that you will always hear or you will read from the scriptures. But what can we do? This is a story by the master storyteller. None other than but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ loves to tell stories. In your Bible, probably you have the heading, the parables. Now with our parables, par parables are earthly stories. These are stories of everyday life. 
that Jesus used to preach using that as a base for him to tell us about truth. He would like us to learn truth lessons from all of these stories that comes from every happenings or event in our lives. That's why parables, if you will read it, will really tell you how Jesus Christ loves to use stories about agriculture. The parable of the seed, the sower. He uses stories about even fishing. Stories about even what we call kingdom. He even used stories about treasures. He will use stories about family, workers and employers' relationship. He will even use stories about business. You remember the parable of the wedding feast? He will even use stories about party. He uses all kinds of stories to present a spiritual truth to his hearers, especially to his followers. You know, one thing that you can learn about the parables, parables are actually for Christ's followers. You tell it, these stories, maybe some of you are just, oh, those are simple stories, but people cannot learn spiritual truths about it. They cannot learn lessons about it. But for us, people of God, as Jesus Christ explained to us the purpose and those stories, we know you and I can understand because parables are for God's people. So I hope that this morning you will really understand the meaning of this story. Now, if Jesus Christ uses stories from agriculture, from fishing, from business, from family, from treasures, from employer and employee relationship, even from party, of course, he will tell stories about money. Right? He will tell stories about money because money plays a dominant role in our lives, right? If he will not tell stories about money, then these stories will not be complete. Because money plays a dominant role in our lives. Statistics will tell us that we spend more of our time waking up or thinking about money when we are awake. We think more about it. Actually, statistics will tell us that if you are 85 years old, you think on your waking time, 50 years of that 85 years old, thinking about money. People think about how we can acquire it, how you can acquire it more, how you will spend it, how you will save it, how you will invest it, how you will borrow it, how you will count it, how you will give it, how you will loan it. And for husband and wife, sometimes you are thinking how to hide it from each other. <laughs> how do you know, pastors? I'm doing it sometimes. <laughs> but mercy always discovers it. I can't hide. And no wonder Jesus Christ tells this story out of the 40 stories that you can read in the Bible. One out of three is about money. See the wisdom of Jesus and as he reveals to us the reality of life. One out of three. And the passage that we have read is one of the examples. And you have heard it, but it's actually the greatest investment of all. And this is a story, again, told by the master storyteller using an employer-employee, if you would like to put it as a business story, then this is his story. That there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So you can imagine that in this story, this rich man is far away from his employee. And because he's far away, one day he heard that this manager of his is squandering his money. So he called 
just like any in other business, he called this manager and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management. And the sad news is this. You cannot be manager any longer. You're fired. Normal stories, right? You can hear it. You can read it. Maybe you can hear it from your friends. I hope not from you. <laughs> but what will you do? And this is the answer of this manager. The manager said to himself, what will I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their house. People will welcome me into their house. What will you do? But you know, he said to himself, oh, I know what I'll do. I have a good idea. I have a bright idea. I know I cannot work because I'm weak. I cannot dig menial works. I can't do it. I'm a manager. But at the same time too, I am ashamed to beg. So this is what I will do. And this is what he did. So he called in each of his master's doctor, uh, debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. In other translation, it's 100 measures of olive oil. Now, if you will compute 100 measures of olive oil, it's around 900 gallons. And 900 gallons is uh, actually an equivalent of three years' wages. So what he is saying to the debtors of his manager is, I am giving you 50%. Not, not his money. That's the money of his master. Then he goes to the other person and he said to the other person, how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat. Now a thousand bushels of wheat is, it has to be around a hundred acres to produce those wheat. So the value is equal to eight to ten years of one man's labor. So what he did is, okay, take your bill and make it 800. Wow. 20% discount. One is 50%. The other one is 20%. Now let me explain this. Because this is an old story. During their time. Now in agricultural world. That paid in kind was often paid at harvest. If you owed olive oil or wheat or any other commodity, you paid it when it was harvest time. So these debts were outstanding and awaiting payment at harvest time. It's a great idea. He goes to each of his master's debtor, strike a deal to discount the debt big time. Wow irresponsible initially wasting his master's possession and right now he is now an embezzler. Name it. And if you are an employer and you have this kind of employee, you will immediately find him and maybe you will sue him. But look at the answer of this rich man. The master commended the dishonest manager because he has acted shrewdly. Shocking, right? Oh, you like this kind of manager. Oh, this owner. But let me remind you that he was not commanding, commending or praising this man because he is irresponsible or embezzler or squanderer. The owner commended this manager for the reason that this man is shrewd. This man is wise. This man is clever. And this is a very familiar one in the next verse. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind. 
Is this true? This is true, right? This is true. You look at the stories of Jesus Christ using these normal everyday stories happening, not only happening in our time, in politics, in business, but even during their time, it is already happening. And just imagine, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, the master storyteller, the God who was incarnated in the flesh, using this example to teach us a lesson. And maybe you are asking, oh, pastor, why is he using the world of an unbelieving world in order for us to learn spiritual truth? These are not new. You're familiar with the parable or the story of the unjust judge. This importunate woman who keeps on coming to this this unjust judge, and this unjust judge, oh, because you are keep on coming to me, I will give you justice. And God said, how much more we people of God, if God will not give us justice. And all of us are looking for it, but God said, will you have faith? Are you going to wait for that judgment? Again, using a, a, an unbeliever, even not just an unbeliever, but an evil, wicked judge, and even applying that if those wicked judges will give justice to this woman who's been coming to him every day, eventually he gives him justice, how much more are God? So Jesus now tells us the lessons of this story. But I hope each of you, and I believe each of you can understand that this is what he would like us to learn, the truth. And he said, I tell you, look into his disciples, look into his followers. Use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. So the greatest investment of all is this. Use worldly wealth to gain friends. What friends? Friends who one day will become your heavenly friends. This is the reason why we are here. He would like us to be friends with others. And the best way to be friends with others is what? Treating them free. Maybe you have heard, read, read the, the video. I hope you are there. Of course, we are doing this also next uh, December 31st. We, again, our partnership with Ignite, they're going to have a, a free lunch for the homeless, for the people in Wilmington. Most of you are, some of you are in our community outreach with Ignite, with Paso Collins. And I encourage you, if you have not yet experienced this, just go and, 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 and look. If you will distribute free lunch, people will come to you. If you, will, if you will just use your material wealth in order to bless other people, oh wow, you, you, they, will, they will come to you and they will become your friends. And this is the lessons that God would like us to learn from this story. And I know it's hard to talk about this. You know, because I know there are a lot of pastors out there, some pastors out there who uses their offering to buy airplanes. They're using offering to buy big houses. And that's why not many are preaching this kind of message because a lot of times you can hear and watch and even hear pastors just using money of God for the purpose of enriching themselves. That's why it's very important that you know your pastor. Most of the pastors that you watch on TV, you idolize them, you follow them, but do you know what are they doing with the money that their members are giving to them? That's very important. That's why it's very important for you to know the pastor. Very important for you to, 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 to know us. Not because we are bragging about it. We have to live. I need to feed my wife. Pastor Paul needs to. It's also in the Bible that uh, we need to support our pastors. But the problem, there are pastors who are just enriching themselves just for the sake of using every members and even people outside of the church in order to enrich themselves. That's hard. But we have to learn what Jesus Christ is saying on this. 
This is the reason why we're doing outreach and community outreach. This is the reason why we would like to disciple people. We would like people to become like Christ, just like us. So that when they become like Christ, they will learn how to minister to others. And ministering to others is not just by words. Sometimes we're calling people without even them feeding them or treating them even for one small sandwich. Before you scold somebody, can you just treat them first with a sandwich or give them a drink first? Because it's much more easier for them to listen to what you're saying if they are full than they are hungry. Okay? How do you know that, Pastor? We know. We've been on the field. And this is the reason why I'm encouraging you to look outside of ourselves. Look on others. No, but pastor, you know I'm saving for my retirement. You know I'm waiting for me to become 67 or 66 years old, 67. And then 68, you die. <laughs> you waited so many years looking forward to it. And then you found yourselves after your retirement, you're dead. No, pastor, I'll be 70 years old. Yeah, when you're 70 years old, you cannot eat the food that you would like to eat after 70 years old. <laughs> you cannot sleep as good as it is in your expensive mattress. You, you will just look on those beautiful beaches and just say, oh, good, I would like to go there when you're 70 years old. Just like, no, it's cold, it's cold. <laughs> look, look at the lives of people. You know, been pastors for so many years and with witness, we're able to see people. Like we can tell you stories after stories of people who are just invested themselves with themselves and their broken families, broken life. Not good relationship with others known. In the community, not because of goodness, but known in community because of stinginess and taking advantage of others. But Jesus Christ said, no, you can use your wealth to make friends so that when it is gone. Look at the words. When it is gone, you will be welcome." into eternal dwellings. First lessons, brothers and sisters, is use your wealthy, your worldly wealth in order to gain friends. Second lesson is this. The second lesson is, again, in that passage, and this is what the Lord said, that we can learn from this truth. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Let me step back a little bit with that heavenly dwellings. Or welcoming people for heavenly friends. Some of us are saying, but pastor, you know, I'm not rich. I understand that. I only just have a few things. Not much money. You know what the Lord is telling us in this story? Just be faithful. With the little we have. Because once you are being faithful with the little you have. God is saying in the passage. I will trust you. With much. This means that don't worry even if you have little. I'm telling you. The, 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 the stuffed toys. Those, uh, those small cars. Those toys that Sister Sue and Brother Vic had given to the, the picture that you have read, that you have uh, the video that you have seen. I was just watching because our team was excited giving it to, to people, feeding people and giving those clothes. What I was looking at those small kids. And these small kids, as I look at, at her, at him, I was so happy. You know what he's happy with? He's happy for that small stuff. Stuff toys. And I nearly cry because I was just... Reminded of how these stuffed toys are just garbage, are just trash in this country. And yet, when it reached the hands of that small girl, he was so happy. 
She was so happy. You, know, you will be happy looking at those, at, at those small girls and those children having those, those jeeps, small jeeps. Small things. But pastor, you know, when I have much, then that's the time I will give much. I'm waiting to win in a lottery, pastor. You know, I'm waiting for my auntie to die. Because when I have much, I will give more. That's not true. Jesus Christ said that's not true. Why? Because look at the passage. Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. Whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. It's not a question of how little or how much we have. It's a question of faithfulness with what we have. It's not a question and a problem of our circumstances. It is a question of our character at the moment who we are now. Because if we cannot be faithful in small things, we cannot be faithful with big things. And that's the reason why maybe some of you are asking, Pastor, what's happening to me? I keep on trying to do this and to do that. Why is it that I am not rich as my neighbor? Because they're wise in dealing with their own kinds. But God is also true. When you become faithful with small things, God will entrust you with bigger things. It doesn't matter how much. You know, as pastors, I love to visit people. 40 years of pastors, and I love to visit people. You know, we come from a poor country in the Philippines. And normally, we're used to do visits. That's why if you can have problem with pastors, have problem with smelly feet, that's, that's me. It's good. I'm improving because I'm in America now. There are a lot of medications here. But normally you visit with a hole on your, on, your, on your shoes. Those of you in the Philippines know this. And you walk. You have no car. You just walk and you visit because you would like to minister to people. And when you minister to people, sometimes you know you 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 will you will you will be with them when they are ready to eat. And when they're ready to eat, they'll stop. Oh, Pastor, praise God, you're here, Pastor. These are poor people. And maybe you've heard this story. And they said, Pastor, have you eaten your dinner already? Oh, oh, not yet. Oh, oh, Pastor, please eat first. So instead of them eating it. They will give it to pastors. You know that, ma'am, right? You're loving because that's our life in the past. <laughs> but you know, these two kids, small, they stop because they're ready to eat. But when the pastor came, the, 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 the kids, the, the father said, oh, we have to give way to the pastor. So the kids are there just watching. And the food is just not enough for them. It's just enough for them. So they're watching. The pastor don't know about it. That it's just enough for them. So the pastor was eating happily this fish. F-I-S-H. <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> and the two kids are watching. And while the pastor is eating that one fish, the, the, the two kids are saying, Ah, Kuya, Kuya is elder brother. Look, the pastor is already flipping the fish. <laughs> Maybe you've heard about this, flipping the fish. <laughs> We have no more to eat because the pastor already flipped it. <laughs> Maybe I have heard though, but I can tell you, I can tell you stories after stories of how poor people are very generous, are very faithful. Why? Because they look to God. Actually, to tell you frankly, Jesus Christ or the Word of God is. It's a, a saddest words. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were cold. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not worthy of a noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to notify that the things that are so that no one may boast before you. Do you know? 
that the people whom God using in every church are those people who have less, not much. Those people who are foolish in the sight of the world. And yet, who are those people? You, me. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is right. Faithfulness Faithful people are faithful people whether they have little or much. Unfaithful people are unfaithful people whether they have little or much. And we need to keep on reminding that God is so faithful to us. So good to us. Use worldly wealth to gain friends. Another lesson is use worldly wealth to gain your future. Remember, this manager goes to his, man, to, his, uh, to his owner's debtors for what purpose? Oh, when I am jobless, I am not that strong to work. I am ashamed to, 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 to beg. Oh, this is what I will do. I'll go to every debtors and I'll give you 50%. I'll give you 20%. For what purpose? Not only to gain friends, but also to secure his future. So the manager distributed his master's money resources to his debtors, not only to befriend them, but to secure his future. And you know what's the lesson that Jesus Christ would like us to learn? This is in verse 11. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Not only when we're gone, our money will be left behind. And you know the story, but pastor, I will give that to my children. Praise God for that one. I am dreaming of that one. But you know the story, right, of the parable of the rich man when Jesus Christ uh, told this story about this man. Oh, I have a lot of things already and then I will build more bigger barns and I will store it and I will say to myself, oh, be merry, just eat and drink and after that you die. That's the word of God. Tonight, I will require you of your life. And those things that you have left, are you sure that those things that you left behind will, will, will make the life of your children in the future? And even of those people? Now, praise God, I'm not saying we don't. The Bible also tells us in Old Testament, you can leave an inheritance to your children, okay? But what I am saying is, at the expense of being unfaithful to God, then, you know, that's not sure. Because it's much more better for me, for my children to walk in the will of God and to have those spiritual knowledge and their, even their life before God than all the worldly wealth. Because we all know there are a lot of rich people, a lot of people who have a lot of money and it destroys their lives, their future because they don't know how to handle. They don't know how to be faithful to it. But this passage will tell us, and we all know this, one day we all stand before God and we will give an account. You are all familiar with the story of the parable of the talents, right? And the parable of the mina. Wherein this master distributed one, two, and five. And that speaks of money actually. Even the parable of the mina. Those are two different parables. Those are two different stories using money. And then when the master returns, he asks for the accounting. I gave you two. What happened to your two? Oh, master, it gained two more. The other one with five, oh, master, it gains five more. But the other one with one, what did he do? With his one, he hide it. Didn't use it. And the sad news is, okay, get his one. He give it to the other who has five. Brothers and sisters, really money does belong to this life. It belongs to this world. But one day money will fail us. One day when our life is taken, it will be gone. We cannot take it with us. But you know what's the good news and what's the wisdom of this Jesus Christ story? We can use our money for it to result 
for a heavenly friend. That what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world but lose his own soul? You know, our money can transcend this world. Those stories that you normally hear, the parable of the Talib, the parable of the Minas, and even Paul, when he was commending the believers in Philippi, he's saying this, Moreover, as you Philippians know in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I sent out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. And look at his words. Not that I desire your gifts. Paul is saying, you know, I, you know, I don't need because God is always providing the needs. God is always providing the needs. But this is what Paul says. Not I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to his account. To your to my account, if I give to God. I will not become rich on this earth. I hope, young people, you will become rich, okay? I'm not saying that you don't become rich. I hope that the Lord will bless your business. I hope that bless your business, Josh. I hope that you will bless your work. But what I am saying is this. Use it for the honor and for the glory of God. And you will not only be rich in this world, but you can also be rich up there. One day we will stand before God and we don't know when. I was just reading the newspaper or not the newspaper, watching the football, the soccer, the world in, in Qatar. And I just read there is one, a reporter who just passed away, right? Suddenly, wow, very young. Also, another news from Filipino, it's, it's a singer, 29 years old, suffered with a heart attack or aneurysm. I'm not saying that it will happen to you or to me. I pray that all of us will have long life, okay? But the reality is we are not holding our life. But praise God. He's telling us not only and actually for me, this is not just a, a earthly story with a heavenly benefit, but even with an earthly benefit. Because in the next passage, it tells us, if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have been not trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? While, of course, this is about the rewards that we will be getting in heaven, I believe that true riches on this earth, if you have that peace, if you have that love, if you have that, that contentment that you work hard and that you have that contentment and you do the best you can, and yet you have that contentment, I believe that's wealth. That's true riches. Why? People are wanting to have money for what? For them to have joy, happiness. And yet, when they have it, they're not happy. Why? They keep on looking for it. Again, I'm not saying that we don't have to work hard. We have to do the best we can. Work hard because that's in the Bible. But the point Jesus Christ would like us to learn from this story is this. Be wealthy too in your spiritual life because that's what really matters. And the last one is this. I need to cut short the message because, again, I need to be diverse. <laughs> no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one or love the other. You will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The key word is serve. Okay? Not bad to have money. I pray that a lot of our younger generation will have a lot of money. But the issue of the Lord in this passage is money can be your master or money can be your servant. Money is a worse master. It destroys life of people. 
It destroys family. It destroys relationship. Why? Because money is their master. But money is a great servant. And if we will put God first in our lives, make him truly as our master, really serve him, then that's the only way we could make money as our servant. And that's why Jesus Christ is saying you cannot serve both. You have to put one first on top and then make the other one a servant. Because when you become a servant of money, then you cannot serve God. But if you will serve God and really tell him as your master, you can serve and use your money as your servant. And no wonder. Jesus Christ said, again, the story, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your heart is, there will be your treasure. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart is. Let's check our bank account. To whom are we always using our money? Brothers and sisters, I know this is hard, and it's not new. It's not a new thing that people don't want to hear messages like this. Why? Look at this next passage. The parasist who love money heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. People who don't like to hear this kind of message, like this parasist, the bottom line is, we just love money. But praise God, you're here. Not because of money. Nor are we. We're here because we serve God. And even if we hear message after message about this money, this worldly wealth, we will not be offended. Why? Because we would like to use it to gain friends, heavenly friends, for us to be able to gain our future, our real future is when we stand before God and let him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. The reason why we're here is to remind ourselves, Lord, I will not be a servant of money. I will be your servant. And I know if I will be your servant, then I can manage well what you have given to me. I know money will be my servant. And if he will be my servant, then I can use that servant for your honor and for your glory. Anyway, everything comes from you. We came into this world with nothing. We will return to you with nothing. And thank you for reminding me that you saved me. Not because I love money, but you saved me because you love me. And because you love me, I will love you too because you first loved us. Let's all stand. And let us thank God for all the blessings that he's giving us. Thank God for your money. Bless him. Praise him. Not many people have those kind of money like you have. But at the same time, tell God, God, I don't want my money to be my master. I would like you to be my master. Amen. Because I know if I'll make you as my master, you will make that money a blessings for me, for my family. You will make that as a blessing to others. And I know I'm investing this money for you. Because I know one day I'll stand before you. And I will give an account what you have given me. Let's close our eyes, let's bow our head. And let us pray. Father, thank you for this loving reminder of yours. 
Forgive us, Lord. Sometimes we are, and most of the time, we are affected with what we are seeing, what we are listening outside of this church family. It's all about enticing us, tempting us with a lot of those things that money can buy. Sometimes, Lord, we are being fooled into it. We work hard just to buy a lot of these things, Lord, that sometimes we don't really need. And as Lord, we found ourselves working so hard, receiving a lot of stress, even at the expense of our relationship with our family, with our loved ones. And yet we ask ourselves, what happened? out dear God it's because we have allowed money to be our master thank you Lord for this reminder of yours that we can make money as our servant and it's because you are in us you would like us to use every resources that we have for your honor and for your glory for our families for your church and even for those people outside of the church for us to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to them and Lord help good shepherd to be that kind of people dear God of your followers who can use our money to make friends so that those friends can hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this community, even in other parts of the world. And we know the reason why. We are just two words. But truly, when we came into this world, we came with nothing and we will return to you Lord with nothing and yet Lord we thank you for you have given us the strength you have given us the ability to gain wealth to gain to gain this money because you would like to use it not only for others to use it to honor and to glorify you and to serve and to store our wealth up there in heaven because we know one day we will stand before you and we will give an account of what you have entrusted, Lord, to us. And thank you, dear God, for this reminder that one day you will tell your people, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in small things. I will entrust you with bigger things. Lord, thank you for that encouragement. This is the reason, Lord, why you don't want us to serve money but to serve you to make money our servant Father we thank you for this loving reminder just like a parent to his children thank you Lord for your love thank you dear God for this message and may you continually minister to each one of us Lord as we listen to these stories of yours for us to know the truth and for us to have this spiritual lessons. And we give you the honor, we give you the praise, and we ask this Lord in Jesus' name. Amen.